everybody, it's Karina again. I'm back with another video today to review another product. Um, I have this, I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong, but it's called uh, a Pentalic Traveler's Pocket Journal. Uh, it's a little bit big for a pocket journal. I don't know if this is supposed to mean something different and I don't have a clue what it means, but it is fairly huge. This is my hand and this is the size of the book. So it has 74 pound sketch paper in there. It's recycled paper. And let's see, it's eight by six inches, uh, 74 pounds, which is 120 GSM, 160 pages, and it is acid free. Uh, let's see, the cover was made in Italy and the cover is very nice and soft, almost leathery. And it kind of has a look to it like a moleskin. Has the elastic draw string right here to keep your book closed. If I could keep my hands on it, that would be great. Um, <laughs> And this obviously comes off. I'm just gonna set that aside there and let's see what else. So in the back we have this very vibrant orange ribbon to help mark your page. My camera is not picking it up but this is almost neon orange. Uh, and it has this little pouch in the back as well, the same as the moleskins um, usually have. So I'm just gonna tuck this inside here. I usually cut these out but I kind of like the orange color. I have orange nails today too. Um, <laughs> let's see here. The paper is white on the inside, does not lay flat unless you crack the spine. So if you crack the spine slightly, which is probably gonna happen anyway, you can definitely have your book lay flat. Paper is nice and smooth. Not as thick as a moleskin, it feels more like printer paper. So that's gonna be interesting to see if all these mediums I have over here, the pens and the inks can hold up to, or the paper can hold up to the, to the inks and whatnot. Um, first page is yellow on the inside. And yeah, first starting off in the book, it's not gonna lay flat. But once you get more towards the center, then it'll be easier. It is stitched. It is stitched and glued by the looks of it. So you got double the um, uh, security, I guess, so your pages don't fall out. So that's a good, that's a good thing. So with that being said, I'm going to take this last page in the book that I never do anything on anyway. And I'm going to test my um, supplies that I have here and that'll let you pretty well know what this book can and can't handle. So the first thing I have here is Prismacolor Premier. Um, I think this is a pigment marker. It's a fine line marker, it doesn't say. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna write what it is. And I'm just gonna flip the page over. And it goes through just slightly, but not it's not too horrible. I can just vaguely see it through. So it didn't like really bleed through, but if you're gonna use ink, it seems like that you're not gonna be able to um, use both sides of the paper. Now this is a Copic multi-liner. Sorry guys, I can't write and talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go see if this is gonna go through. I'm gonna zoom this in just slightly here if I can, if I don't make anyone sick. So again, it shows through slightly on the back, but it's not really bleeding through the paper. So these are the materials that I normally use when I'm just fooling around in a sketchbook. So this right here is just a Sharpie. And again, I'm pretty sure this is gonna give me the same effect as the last one. This one is even a lot duller, so I can, is that even a word, duller? I'm so you can't even see it through the back of the paper. So the next one here is gonna be a little different. This is my Pentel uh, pocket brush pen. I'm still getting used to using this thing. I can't keep this in focus now. Um, so I'm just gonna write pocket brush.
And with this one, I'm gonna put a little square here and kind of rub that ink in there nice and good so I can kind of get an idea of how much ink I can put on the page. And let's do the test here. Now this one goes through just a little bit more, but I really soak that in, <clears throat> excuse me, with a lot of ink. So depending on how much of this you use, you could be pretty safe. So the next thing that I sometimes use in my journals or my sketchbooks, I should say, are these Faber-Castell pit pens. So I am just going to write pit pen. And I'm again going to make that color swatch right there. And I'm going to color that in. Now the paper just started to um, deteriorate there. So I'm assuming this is going, going to go through quite a bit. Well, not as much as the pocket brush, but paper doesn't really hold up well to wet um, mediums. So the next one here, I'm going to use a Copic just a basic Copic marker. And again, I'm gonna put that. Okay, so this is not eating up the paper as much as the pit pen. But let's see, oh, it goes through really, really bad. So if you plan on using Copics in this kind of a book, you will definitely need to have a protector sheet. If not, stuff like this is gonna happen. So that's uh, it's that one. Let's see here. Then we have this Carolina Wink. I don't think this is gonna go through at all, but I'm just gonna, I have to look at the pen to spell this. So this is a paint marker. And actually, this is eating up the page just slightly, not horribly, but the tip up, oh, whoops, there we go, back into focus again. The tip of this pen is a little bit rough, um, or it's hard, I should say, so it does eat the paper up slightly. I did a review of these in another video um, on my channel if um, you'd like to go and check that out. I can put it a, a link down in the description. And we have a Posca pen. I'm just going to give this a quick shake here before I go ahead. Oh, let's see if it went through. Okay, so just slightly where I imprinted the pen, uh, the pen tip where the pen's hard, it just slightly went through on the back there. Okay, so this is the Posca. Again, it's eating away at the paper. Did I spell that right? <laughs> I'm horrible at spelling, people. I'm horrible at spelling. Um, so that didn't go through, but I could see where it could eat away at the paper if you use too much of it. So that is the Posca pen. And the last thing that I'm gonna try here um, before I go is some gouache. And to see if this will actually, um, the paper will tolerate that. And I'm just gonna use a vibrant yellow here. So hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see it. And I'm putting this on, I'm gonna use two spots here. So this one didn't have a whole lot of water. Um, so I'm just gonna really use a lot of water in the second spot here because I want to see if this book can hold up to water very well and now I have to let's hope this oh it's gonna run it's gonna run okay so I'm just gonna see if I can't flip this over real quick here Let's put the napkin here so this doesn't get on the other page. So it did hold up to the water pretty well. Whoops, there we go. It did hold up to the water pretty well. It's not coming through the back. I can feel where the paper is slightly wet, but I'm sure that if you wanted to use a gouache um, at least on this paper, it, it would be quite doable. I'm actually going to get my um, Koi watercolors real quick here and test to see what it would be like. I know that gouache and 
gouache and um, watercolors are fairly similar, but you know, just for the sake of trying it and seeing what happens, let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to use the same brush that I was using before instead of making another brush dirty. So I'm just going to, let's try an orange this time. This is the Koi watercolors. Oh, that's not working out very well now, is it? Why is that happening? That should not happen. Okay, let's try that again. That should not happen with the... Uh, maybe I didn't make it wet enough. Let's try it again. Oh, there we go. I just got too much pigment on there now. But, let's try this. Now let's pull this over real quick and see how the back of the paper held up to that. And it's even, it's not even gone through as much as the, as the gouache, but I didn't load up as much water with this as I would normally do. So you could definitely get away with um, using, uh, I'm just going to write this down real quick. And this is koi. You can definitely get away with uh, using water mediums in this book if you keep it at a minimum, I think. Like, a, don't use a whole lot of water. Um, or if you layer down something, like, uh, not layer down, if you start with small layers, is what I'm trying to say, and build your way up, then I think that you would be would be fine if you have some patience. If not, uh, this book is not going to be any good for wet mediums at all. You can see the page is crinkling right here, but I really don't mind that. Thank you guys so much for watching my video today. If you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment down below, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already to make sure you see my future videos. If you'd like to see my previous video, go ahead and click on this video on the left here. If you want to see one of my random videos, go ahead and click on the video on the right. Until next time, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.